Two people are dead following a gas explosion at the Escambia County Jail booking facility. I'm Steve Alexander and I'll have a live report. And the Gulf Coast continues to recover after what many are calling historic flooding. We'll take a look at some of the hardest hit areas. Fox 10 News at 6 a.m. starts right now. You're watching Fox 10 News at 6 in high definition television. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for choosing Fox 10 News on this Thursday morning, May 1st. I'm Eric Reynolds. And I'm Sarah Wall. Good morning, everyone. Let's check in first now with meteorologist Michael White for a look at today's weather forecast. And Michael White, we would like for you to tell us it's going to dry out. It is. It is going to dry out. Now, we're not going with an entirely dry forecast today, but I will tell you the chance of rain very low, only 20%. And anyone that sees rain is going to only see light rain. No more severe weather, no more torrential downpours. And then by the time we hit the weekend, we're going to end up dry for several days. So lots of opportunity uh, for people to clean up and dry out after the disastrous flooding that we saw the last couple of days. That's right. Yesterday afternoon was pretty good. Get that sunshine and dry conditions. Conditions. Exactly, Eric, and we're going to see some of that again today in okay. spots. We will see the sunshine, I promise. Just depends on where you live. As far as what we have on the radar, we did have some rain move through last night, but that's all around Panama City Beach and moving in towards the north and east. What we are going to be watching is the formation of more showers out in the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Now you see these thunderstorms showing up just to the south of Panama City. They're tracking northeast towards uh, Mariana and Chipley and towards the wiregrass sections of Alabama. What we're going to be focusing on is who's going to get the rain in our area. Well, if you live around Baldwin County or the Panhandle, you're going to be the ones with the best chance. But we'll be watching for the formation of showers in the Gulf. Any showers that show up today should do so primarily in the morning. I think we'll have a pleasant afternoon and all the details on that coming up in just a bit. Guys. It's now 6.02 and Fox 10 News has been following a developing story in Pensacola. Officials have confirmed two inmates were killed. Dozens of inmates and people and jail employees were injured after an explosion. The blast happened around 11 last night at the Escambia County Jail. That's on West Leonard Street. Fox 10 News reporter Steve Alexander joins us live with the very latest. Steve, what can you tell us? Well, good morning, and the good news is that authorities say that they have looked through the building, they have sent teams to route, and they believe everyone is accounted for. Of course, there have been two people killed. Those were both inmates, according to Escambia County officials, two inmates who were killed, 100 to 150 injured. Now, we have some video from a little bit earlier. It's, uh, last night, reporter Katie Weiss has been here since that explosion happened about 11 o'clock last night in the central booking facility. They're still trying to determine exactly what caused it. ATF on the scene, the state fire marshal, but they do believe it could be related to flooding because the area was flooded. And you might remember back in 2012, they had a substantial amount of rainfall, much like they had yesterday here in the Pensacola area, and that could have some relationship with the gas leaks. As a matter of fact, when I was driving up, you could kind of smell gas about a block or two away. So the investigation is continuing. All the injured have been brought to four and five hospitals. The inmates have been brought to other Escambia facilities as well as jail facilities around the area. Uh, some of the reports, uh, some hospitals say they may have gotten maybe 50 people injured, 15 treating and released, but all of their injuries, at least out of Baptist Hospital and Gulf Breeze Hospital, are non-life-threatening injuries, so that's certainly good news. But of course, the question is, what happened? If you can see on this live shot, you can see, if you look right on that green part of the building, the explosion happened toward the front, we understand, but there is a there is damage you can see on the green part on the right side of the building. So they say substantial damage in the back, which we're not able to see, and especially on the second and fourth floors. But again, I don't think we're gonna be seeing that today while the ATF is investigating. But again, two people dead. We do not have their names. They're both said to be inmates. Reporting live from Pensacola, Steve Alexander, Fox 10 News. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Hey, Steve, one question for you. I know the details are still being sorted out. Is the rest of the jail still open or have they closed the whole thing down? Close the whole thing down from what I understand. Yeah, they've moved people out and uh, the facility just to make sure everybody was accounted for. And as I understand, it's closed down. 
All right, Steve Alexander live in Pensacola. Thank you very much for that report. We're going to check back in with Steve throughout the morning for the latest developments. Now, as we uh, Steve mentioned, we're told that 50 people were sent to Baptist Hospital in Pensacola after the explosion. Of those, 12 have been released. And of the 31 people sent to Gold Breeze Hospital, 13 have been released. All of the injuries have been described as non-life threatening. Baptist Healthcare has set up a number for families. If you believe you have a loved one who may have been injured in this explosion, Explosion. Here are a few numbers that you can call. For inmates, the number is 850-436-9630. For jail employees, that number is 850-554-1430. Residents across the Gulf Coast continue to pick up the pieces after what authorities call historic flooding. The torrential rain swamped Pensacola with nearly two feet of rain. People were stranded in cars and homes waiting for rescuers to find a way around impassable roads and others abandoning vehicles to walk to safety. Officials say that one woman died, though, when she drove her car into high water. Florida Governor Rick Scott toured the damage yesterday. He says the state will be on hand to help with recovery efforts. Uh, we have a very good working relationship with FEMA. Um, right now, the National Guard, all the local efforts are working, uh, but we're going to keep making sure. We've got devastation in, our, in some of our roads, uh, so yes. it's going to take a lot of uh, transportation dollars to get that fixed. The governor has declared a state of emergency for several counties, including Escambia, Santa Rosa, and Okaloosa. One of the hardest hit areas in the, is the Fish River area in Baldwin County. Now officials say that the river reached over 24 feet, flooding dozens of homes there. Fox News reporter Chastity Bird joins us live this morning with the latest. Good morning, Chastity. How is it looking there this morning? Good morning, Eric and Sarah. I'm here on Fish River. We're actually off County Road 9, off Honey Road. We reported here last night during the 4, 5, and 9 o'clock newscast where I'm told where I'm standing right now. If I was standing here yesterday, I would have been about a foot underwater. Now, take a look behind me. All this that you're seeing behind me, I guess it's good news we can actually see a pier out here because that was underwater. But look at all of the debris that we have out here. We're still seeing boats. Uh, I see the pontoon boat that we talked about at last night at 9 still up on its side uh, over to my left and again just a lot of water down here but nothing like what we saw yesterday you're taking a look at that boat right now that uh, I'm talking about um, but besides that the water has receded a lot today but that doesn't mean that we're completely in the clear I'm actually joined now by Baldwin County Sheriff Huey Haas Mack and Haas uh, it has been definitely a very busy 48 hours for you guys. Let's first get an update as far as overnight is concerned. Well, last night it was very quiet. We're proud to report that we did not have any storm related calls or issues last night. We did have increased patrols out last night, but we encountered no issues. Um, and you were telling me uh, the next couple of days, of course, people are want to go, going to want to get out. Weather has cooperated, weather is going to cooperate, but there's still some danger there. Absolutely. It's a beautiful. Beautiful morning here on Fish River, but there's a lot of debris. Uh, we have several boats that are missing, not only on Fish River, but on some of our other waterways. So there may actually be debris and even vessels underneath the water. We're asking anybody that comes out on the water today or this weekend to please be very cautious and mindful of our river conditions. Um, as far as any of them being closed, Hoss, nothing like that is going to happen, like closing the waterways, right? No, the waterways will be open. There may be some launches, such as this launch, which has to be repaired that may not be open, but most of the public launches will be open. But once again, we just want people to be very mindful of what's going on on the rivers. And you did say that there were actually going to be some repairs going on today uh, of some emergency repairs. That's correct. The highway department will be out today addressing some of the most serious concerns as it relates to our roadways. There'll be some emergency repairs done. Most of our roadways have been back open, but we do have some significant spots that they're going to try to do emergency repairs on today to get those those roads open for everybody quickly. If residents were worried about traveling in Baldwin County yesterday, I know, especially in southern Baldwin County, it was urged that people try not to get on the roadways. What are you guys saying about that today? Travel today is pretty much unrestricted unless there is a barricade on a road. But what we did notice when the water
water receded yesterday is we do have some shoulder erosion on a lot of our highways. So we're asking people slow down just a little bit, try to maintain your concentration while you're driving. Unlike before, if you drop off the shoulder, there may not be actual dirt or sand there, so it may be more of a severe drop off. So we're asking people to please be attentive to the drive and slow down, but other than that, it's unrestricted. Okay, Sheriff, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Again, a long 48 hours for many in law enforcement, for many residents out here trying to clean up. And what we're told, again, is that most of the rescues that did have to happen yesterday were successful. And what people are really dealing with now is the cleanup and, of course, some without power. Reporting live from Fish River, I'm Chastity Bird. All right, Chastity, thank you very much. And we'll check back in with you throughout the morning through the newscast. Some students in our area are still being impacted by the severe storms that swept through the area. Because of major flooding issues, schools in Escambia and Santa Rosa counties in Florida will be closed again today. Students in Baldwin and Mobile counties will return to class today as scheduled. Well, after the heavy rains, the sun came back yesterday afternoon, but will it stay around for today? We are hoping so. Meteorologist Michael White has all of your details on our weather forecast up next. It's 610. We'll be right back. You're watching Fox 10 News with Sarah Wall, Eric Reynolds, and meteorologist Michael White. Fox 10 News in high definition television. Welcome back. Your time is 613. Mobile Airport reporting temperatures again. 54 is what we're seeing in the Port City. Gulf Shores at 56. Evergreen, your temperature 53. And the high today is only expected to reach 73 degrees today. And the rain chance is extremely low. In fact, I think most of you will not see rain today. The chance of rain only 20%. That risk primarily comes this morning. And then the afternoon, not bad. A mix of sun and clouds and primarily sunny as we hit 5 o'clock with the temperature staying in the low 70s. But what's going to bear watching is what's happening in the Gulf. Showers are forming out there and continuing to track to the north and east. For today, if you're in Baldwin County or the Panhandle, you'll have the better chance of seeing a shower. Another little pocket of energy comes rolling through the Gulf tomorrow, and that will bring us one last rain chance before we move in to your weekend. So your high today, 73. We'll have a north wind at 5 to 10. The sky partly cloudy this afternoon. Tonight, we dip down into the lower 50s, and tomorrow, we're going with a 50-50 rain chance, but the rain will be light and then we go sunny for your weekend with a high in the mid to lower 80s and it looks like beyond that we're going to be sunny for a while. I'll have more details in your extended forecast and I'll also show you the future cast model that's all coming up in the next 10 minutes. Walmart now trying to save you money while you're driving. I'm Cheryl Cassoni with the Fox Business Network. More coming up. Welcome back. Time check now 616 on your Thursday morning. Well, it's only been a couple of weeks since most of the country's cold snap finally tapered off. But some say that winter blast could have a lingering effect on the economy. Fox's Cheryl Cassoni has more in today's business report. Call it a winter freeze. The economy barely growing in the first three months of the year, slowing to the weakest pace in more than a year. The rough winter getting much of the blame for cooling things down. But things might be warming up if you're looking for work. A firm tracking private jobs says 220,000 of them were added in April. That is the most since November. The government's April employment report due out on Friday. Meantime, Walmart driving into the auto insurance business. It's teaming up with AutoInsurance.com to let drivers compare different quotes and buy them directly online. The retail will promote the site in its stores and have a link to it on walmart.com. And from thoroughbred horses to thoroughbred sticks. That is what Pizza Hut is calling its breadsticks this week to celebrate Saturday's Kentucky Derby. It's also selling them for two bucks. That's the minimum price for a bet at a horse race. Pizza Hut's parent company, Yum Brands, is based in Louisville, Kentucky, home of the Derby. And that is business. I'm Cheryl Cassoni. We are continuing to follow a developing story in Pensacola. An explosion at the jail left two inmates dead and dozens of others injured. Also, a Midtown Mobile man will face a judge today. Police say he shot a man over a drug debt. And a man already in jail in connection to a sexual assault case is facing more charges. But this time, he's accused of barging into a home and beating a woman. These stories and more up next. 618 is our time right now. Thanks for joining us right here on Fox 10 News, and we'll be right back.
Tom Jack down at 620 on your Thursday morning. Thanks for joining us here at Fox 10 News. I'm Eric Reynolds. And I'm Sarah Wall. Good morning, everyone. Time for our first look at traffic conditions on this Thursday morning. Well, let's get with Aaron for all the details in our Fox 10 News traffic report. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning. We are starting off with clear conditions on both I-65 and I-10 all throughout the Mobile area. Our main roadway is also starting off accident-free, and we still have some road closures due to deterioration of roadway mostly right now, including Dauphin at McGregor. In uh, areas like Gerby, uh, from Lloyd's Lane to Pepper Tree, we have a large sinkhole that's completely blocked off the roadway there. So a few of those hot spots still active in the Mobile area this morning. Also in Pensacola, we still have some road closures at the North Davis Highway exit ramp to I-110 northbound due to flooding there still. Also, Beulah Road at West Nine Mile Road and East Burgess Road at Vicksburg Drive. Also, portions of Scenic Highway that had washed away, so you'll have to find alternate routes around those areas this morning. But for right now, all accident-free conditions throughout Pensacola this morning. I'm Aaron Adams with your Fox 10 News Traffic. All right, Aaron, thanks a lot. We'll check back in with Aaron for another traffic report in our next half hour this morning at about 6.50. The mobile man accused of kidnapping and assaulting a South Alabama student will be in court today. Now we've learned that he's facing more charges. Police say that this man, 24-year-old Jawan Dawson, has been connected to a home invasion and sexual assault case. Investigators say that Dawson barged into a home on East Drive a week ago. They say he took a woman's cell phone, cash, and electronics. Now the victim says that he also hit her in the face before sexually assaulting her. Police say that crime happened just one day after Dawson forced the student at South Alabama into her car at gunpoint. Now, investigators say the victim was raped several times before being released. Dawson is now facing more charges of robbery, burglary, and sexual assault. He's being held at the Mobile Metro Jail on $193,000 bond. Dawson is expected in court today for an arraignment hearing. The Midtown Mobile man accused in a deadly shooting will also be in court today for an arraignment hearing. Joseph Booth, who you see here, is facing a murder charge in connection to the death of Antonio Crawford. Police say that Booth shot Crawford Sunday morning at his house on Houston Street. They say he tampered with evidence to mislead investigators into believing that it was an attempted at home invasion. However, police say the pair knew each other and the shooting was over a drug debt that Booth owed Crawford. Booth is out of jail on a $150,000 bond. He has also been ordered to surrender his passport. I'm meteorologist Michael White here in the Fox 10 Storm Tracker Center. Not a bad day ahead for your Thursday. The sky going to be partly cloudy with a high of 73. There is a rain chance on the board for today, but that chance is low. I'll talk more about it coming up in two minutes. Welcome back. Your time is approaching 626. Here's a live look at the Fox 10 Storm Tracker radar. You're all dry right now, but we do have a few showers and storms near Panama City Beach, Florida. That is part of the rain that moved through here last night. And what we're going to be watching for is formation of new showers in the Gulf and then seeing where they move. They're all going to track southwest to northeast. And I think if you live in Baldwin County or the Panhandle, you'll be the ones with the best chance to see an additional rain chance today. But that probability only 20%. Temperatures right now are in the 50 primarily 58 in Pensacola, 57 Crestview, Fort Walton Beach, you're at 60 degrees, Jackson up in Clark County, you're almost touching the 40s, Mobile, you're at 54, Pascagoula and Gulf Shores at 56, but the winds are coming in out of the north at around 10 to 15 miles an hour, pumping in dry, stable air, and it certainly does not feel humid outside at all. In the northwestern quadrants, the sky is clear, and we're going to see the clearing line move a little farther to the east today. I just don't think we're going to have a much of a rain chance. The odds only 20%, but then tomorrow another pocket of energy in the Gulf will kick in another rain chance for us. So we're going to have to increase the probability of rain for Friday, but your weekend and next week looking dry. So here's how the future cast looks. Primarily rain free today. Then as we move in towards tonight, we'll start to see rain showing up around Interstate 65 at about 2 a.m. And then we go dry by daybreak. And then by the time we hit Friday evening, another wave will come on shore. That'll be at about 5 o'clock. But then after that wave passes, 
passes. We're not going to see any more rain for the rest of your Friday night or for the upcoming weekend. So your high today 73 mix of sun and clouds with a north wind. Tonight we dip down into the mid to lower 50s with a few isolated showers and up on the seven day planner. Once we get that chance of rain gone for Friday, we go sunny for the weekend and look at next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all sunny with highs in the mid to lower 80s. Guys, we look forward to that forecast. We can use those days. It was nice to see a little sunshine peek out yesterday, so we're hoping for more of that throughout the next few days. Yeah, thank you very much, Michael. We are continuing to monitor developments after an explosion at the Escambia County, Florida jail. And we've learned that two inmates were killed and dozens others were injured. Also, flooding along the Gulf Coast, well, it's left widespread damage. Many victims say they're picking up the pieces and rebuilding. It's 628 on this Thursday. We'll be right back here on Fox 10 News. You're watching Fox 10 News with Sarah Wall, Eric Reynolds, and meteorologist Michael White. Fox 10 News in high definition television. Good morning and thanks for watching Fox 10 News on this Thursday morning. Today is May 1st. I'm Sarah Wall. And I'm Eric Reynolds. Good Thursday morning, everyone. It's now 631 and Fox 10 News continues to follow a developing story in Pensacola. Officials say a gas explosion at the jail has left at least two people dead and more than 100 others injured. The blast happened around 11 last night at the Escambia County Jail. That's on West Leonard Street. Now we've learned that both inmates and employees were hurt. Fox and News have been following the developments throughout the night, and reporter Steve Alexander joins us this morning live with the latest. Steve, what can you tell us at this hour? Good morning, and here in Pensacola, you can see the situation has stabilized. Let me get out of the way and you can get a better idea, perhaps, of some of the damage as we zoom in. There is, on that green facade of the front, there is a huge crack that goes, looks like from about the fourth to the second floor, and then right in front there, you'll see like a part of the white part of the building, perhaps an awning or something, first part blown out. There was a gas explosion, according to Escambia County officials, at 11 o'clock in the central booking area Two inmates were killed, 100 to 150 other people that were hurt. Now, there were 600 inmates in the jail at the time, and they say it could be flood-related because there was some flooding around the area at the time of the gas explosion. Now, everyone has been brought to about four or five area hospitals. Many have been, they've said some had maybe been one hospital 400, I'm one hospital 45, another hospital perhaps 50, a number treated and released, but a Baptist hospital reporting no life-threatening injuries, and certainly that's good news. If you look at the front, this is about the closest that we're able to get, but of course some of the deputies and some of the officials are at the standing in front of the jail. Understand there is some heavy damage on the second and fourth floors, and we can't get to the back, but we understand you can see some pretty bad damage from the uh, back. But everyone has been accounted for as far as county officials know. It's now just a matter of their main priority of getting everybody treated treated family members have gone to the hospitals and trying to find out what caused this exactly. The ATF, alcohol, tobacco, firearms on the scene, as well as the state fire marshal. So that's some of the investigation that they will be doing. Reporting live from Pensacola, Steve Alexander, Fox 10 News. Now we're told that patients were sent to five area hospitals. 50 people were sent to Baptist Hospital in Pensacola after the explosion. Now of those, 12 have been released. And of the 31 folks sent to Gulf Breeze Hospital, 13 have been released. Now, all the injuries have been described now as non-life-threatening. Baptist Healthcare has set up a number for families to call. If you believe that you have a loved one that was injured in the explosion, the number is to call for inmates. Call 850-436-9630. And for jail employees, call 850-554-1430. Now, the inmates who were not injured have been taken to the Santa Rosa County Jail. The Gulf Coast is trying to dry out this morning after historic flooding caused widespread damage. Take a look at Piedmont Road in Pensacola. Parts of the road totally washed away by floodwaters. You cannot see the asphalt, just mud from where the road turned into a river. The washout has left some residents stranded in their homes. Floodwaters also washed away the siding of this brick home on Bayou Boulevard. Dale Silver says the street turned into a rushing river with rapids early yesterday morning. She says when the water hit her home, it took the kitchen wall with it. 
The floor started cracking, the stone floor, like an earthquake. On top of that, I smelled gas. The generator was floating away. And on, finally, the back wall to the kitchen blew out. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Florida Governor Rick Scott has declared a state of emergency for Northwest Florida in the wake of the flooding. Folks along Fish River and Baldwin County saw some of the worst flooding in decades. Take a look at some of the affected homes here. There was a lot of debris in the water, floating propane tanks and garbage cans. There were also heavy boats floating on their sides. Now, many folks were also out trying to salvage their belongings. Scott Thompson and his wife say that they were here when Hurricane Danny hit, and they say this is much worse. I mean, this is amazing, and our father's boathouse is directly across the river, and um, the pylons are usually 22 feet out of the water and there's nothing but just the top of the eave of the, the roof that's sticking out and the boat strapped underneath it. So, I mean, it's, it's just the amount of water is just crazy. Officials say that since the river did not crest until daylight yesterday morning, many folks were stranded in their homes. But fortunately, there have been no reports of injuries. In Gulf Shores, folks are cleaning up after many homes and apartments were damaged by floodwaters. One complex that was hit hard was Dolphin Villas on East 1st Street. Now, nearly every resident living on the first floor had some water damage. People have lost so much more than I have, but you know, at the same time, these are my things and I've worked hard for them. The flood victims say they're trying to salvage what they can and move towards rebuilding. Now, meantime, folks who were evacuated, their homes are now just returning home to access the damage, assess the damage. Dozens of folks took refuge in shelters in Fairhope, Foley, and Robertsdale at the height of the storm. Now, about 14 remained there last night. The Salvation Army, meantime, has deployed canteens to South Baldwin County to help in the recovery efforts. Some students in our area still being impacted by the severe storms that swept through. Because of major flooding issues, schools in Escambia and Santa Rosa counties in Florida will be closed again today. Students in Baldwin County do return to school today, and students in Mobile County on a regular schedule as classes uh, go according to what they should do. For more information on these stories and much more, you can can go to our website, fox10tv.com. You can also sign up for email and text alerts. They will let you know about breaking news or weather events. Remember, we are also streaming all of our newscasts online so you can stay up to date on the go. Once again, it's fox10tv.com. Hi, meteorologist Michael White here in the Fox 10 Storm Tracker Center. While well, our temperatures this morning below seasonal average for May 1st, showing up between 50 and 60 degrees in most spots. And I'll have a complete look at your forecast after you see this. Welcome back. Your time is 640. Here's a look at the temperatures across much of the southeast. Our area is in the mid to lower 50s. And for May the 1st, a typical overnight low would be around 59 and 60 degrees. So we are below seasonal average. And our projected high today is going to be well below seasonal average, too. We should see a high of about 80 this time of year. But we're only going to max out at 73. That'll occur at 3 o'clock. Now, we're not going with an entirely dry forecast. There is a low rain chance for today. That's primarily only going going to be 20% and the better chance will be in the AM hours as we hit the afternoon and evening. The chance of seeing rain much lower. In fact, I think a lot of you are going to see a good looking mix of sun and clouds and primarily sunshine as we hit five o'clock for the drive home with a temperature of 71. Well, the reason we're keeping that low end rain chance in is because of what's happening in the Gulf. We're continuing to see rain form out there and track towards the north and east and move on shore. So if you live in Baldwin County or the Panhandle, you'll have the better chance of seeing the rain today, but the odds will be a little bit higher as we head in towards tomorrow. We have to deal with one more pocket of energy in the upper levels of our atmosphere that will form more rain, and that rain will move towards us. But it's going to be a lot like this. It's going to be primarily light rain, no torrential downpours, no thunderstorms, and certainly no severe weather. So your high today going to be 73, a mix of sun and clouds with a low end rain chance and a north wind at 5 to 10. Tonight we'll dip down to 52 degrees. Odds of rain tomorrow a little higher, but then we go sunny and dry for the weekend. Highs in the mid to lower 80s and it looks like the bulk of next week is going to be dry as well. I'll talk about that and we'll go through the future cast model for the next 36 hours. It's coming up a little bit later this half hour in the next 10 minutes, guys. All right, Michael, definitely looking forward to that sunshine to start drawing things out for us. Most definitely. Well, recovery efforts are underway after the widespread flooding. One of the major concerns is damaged roadways. Fox News reporter Chastity Bird will be speaking to Baldwin County Commissioner Tucker Dorsey about conditions in the county right after this break. 
Your time check 642 on this Thursday morning. More news in just two minutes. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Six forty four is our time right now on this Thursday morning. Thanks for joining us here on Fox 10 News. I'm Sarah Wall. We are continuing to cover the historic flooding across our area. The floodwaters caused plenty of problems on the roadways. Take a look at this stretch of County Road 99 in Lillian. You can see part of the road near the Arbor Ridge neighborhood collapsed. A look inside reveals a car and some huge pipes. We're told a woman was inside that vehicle. She is not believed to be seriously hurt. That's a scene that's happening all across our area. Here's a picture Elizabeth Kistler tweeted to us at Fox 10 News. She says flash flooding caused this huge sinkhole on Camellia Lane in Daphne. And take a look at this picture also from Daphne. Brandy Cheney sent in this picture of a road in the Lake Forest subdivision that just about collapsed. Well, as you can imagine, repairing those affected roadways is a top priority for officials. The Fox News reporter Chastity Bird joins us live this morning from Daphne City Hall with the very latest on this. Good morning, Chastity. Good morning, Eric. We just uh, came from Fish River. We're doing a little tour around Baldwin County this morning. Spoke to Sheriff Hosmack to get an update on the flooding this morning. I'm now joined by County Commissioner Tucker Dorsey. He's joining me this morning to give us a little bit of an update as far as the county is concerned. Now, we have learned that the county has applied for federal assistance due to the flooding that we saw, due to the damages that we saw from this significant rain event. Tucker, thank you for joining me this morning. And first First off, give us an update as far as the county is concerned. Well, we've done a lot of assessments on roads. We've got a couple of roads that we still can't see yet, so we don't know what the damages are going to be. Uh, 48 down at uh, Fish River and then uh, 54 where Fish River crosses. We've got a washout in Lillian, obviously, that has been uh, well publicized overnight. So we're still doing those assessments. Uh, trying. We have an emergency meeting called for noon today where we're going to uh, work on some contract, work with some contractors to get some of these repairs done, the emergency repairs done as quickly as possible, try to get our infrastructure back up. Talk about these emergency repairs just a little bit more. Uh, you know, a lot of people in Baldwin County weren't getting out yesterday. We're worried about getting on the roadways yesterday. What will they be doing with these emergency repairs? Well, some of them we have culverts washed out, or some of the roads been undermined where the uh, where the water's washed out underneath the asphalt. Uh, those repairs that are structural in nature will be uh, repaired first, uh, and they're scattered all over the county from different areas where we had some damage done. And so we'll be a little bit inconvenienced working around some construction crews around the county. So I just ask everybody to be careful about uh, our folks out there and uh, be careful because uh, there may be some areas where we're having to neck down a little bit and not uh, sideswipe somebody. So let's just be careful driving around out there as we try to get our roads back in shape and uh, get back, get our lives back to normal. Tucker, obviously it's very early uh, in this considering, you know, the rain just stopped yesterday. Um, but are, have there been any initial assessments about money-wise, cost-wise uh, to some of these repairs? No, uh, Lillian's obviously going to be expensive to deal with and uh, we've shut down some major, uh, a major area of traffic there. Uh, it's going to cost some money to repair that. Emergency contracts will cost a little bit more money than if we were bidding out a uh, road project uh, looking farther into the future because we need to get our infrastructure back online. Uh, we're we're in the millions of dollars, no question, but until we see some of the uh, other roads that are still underwater and some of the and do finish our bridge inspections, we won't know exactly how much money we're talking about yet. As far as hearing for about the federal assistance, uh, any idea about that? I don't. Uh, you know, down here in Coastal Alabama, we all work really well as a team. So uh, the county's called a state of emergency. The governor's called a state of emergency. Our congressional delegation has requested the president also uh, make that declaration, and the declaration is what uh, uh, kind of sets the uh, FEMA funds in motion. All right. Commissioner Tucker Dorsey joining me very early this morning. I know it's been a long 48 hours, so thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for the coverage, and everybody be safe out there. Thanks. Anytime. And we're going to continue our tour of Baldwin County, taking a look of what's going on today now that the rains have finally stopped and some cleanup can begin. Reporting live in Daphne, I'm Chastity Bird. All right, Chastity, thank you very much. And we'll check back in with you throughout the morning during the newscast. And Chastity makes a good point. We do want that rain to be stopped. We want the sun to come out. We want the conditions for cleanup to be good. And uh, we're hoping that's the case for today. Right, hoping some sunshine's in that forecast, Michael. Yeah, it is, guys. We're going to see low rain chances today with a good mix of sun and clouds. High projected to be well below seasonal average at only 73. I'll have a full look at that forecast. And Aaron checks your traffic up next.
Fun is our time right now on this Thursday morning. It's the first day of May. Thanks for joining us here on Fox 10 News. I'm Sarah Wall. And I'm Eric Reynolds. Good Thursday morning, everyone. Time to see how things are shaping up on the roadways at this hour this morning. Let's check in again with Aaron and see how we're looking on this Thursday morning. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning once again. Traffic still moving at the posted speed limit on both I-65 and I-10 throughout the Mobile area. Also delay-free conditions on both the Bayway and the Causeway. And our main roadway is also accident-free right now. Throughout Pensacola, also trouble-free conditions on both I-10 and I-110. Still a lot of flooded areas along some of the main roadways to so do avoid any roadways covered in water this morning. But right now, still accident-free for your ride into work. I'm Aaron Adams with your Fox 10 News Traffic. And outside on the storm tracker radar, as you saw in the traffic report, the roads are in fact dry. The rain well to the south and east of us, and there is a rain chance for today, but it's going to be very low. We'll just have to watch for the formation of rain in the Gulf and track it as it works its way on shore. Temperatures right now ranging between 50 degrees and 60 degrees, depending on where you live. Pensacola, you're at 58. Mobile right now, you're at 54. The chance of rain today about 1 in 5, but I think most of you stay dry with a partly cloudy sky. There will be another little pocket of energy in the Gulf that could could kick in a few more showers for tomorrow, and the future cast illustrates that pretty well. Not much happening today, but as we transition in towards tonight, showers will show up across Interstate 65 at about 2 a.m., but those which should be gone quickly. And then as we move in towards tomorrow evening around 5 o'clock, that's when we'll have the last leg of rain passing from Pascagoula to Evergreen. It should be gone by about 8 o'clock Friday evening, and then we go dry for the rest of your Friday night and your weekend. High temperature this afternoon, 73, with a north North wind at 5 to 10. Tonight will dip down between 50 to 54 with only a few isolated showers. And then look at your weekend. Completely sunny with a high in the mid to lower 80s. And then look at next week. Monday sunny, Tuesday sunny, and Wednesday sunny. More on that forecast is coming up in your 7 a.m. hour. Eric and Sarah, they have more news next. Welcome back. Time check now 656 on your Thursday morning. Well, if you live in Gulf Shores, listen up this morning. You have a chance to chime in on the future of the city. Next week, city officials will lay out the preliminary plans being developed as part of an ongoing strategic planning initiative. It focuses on the growth and design of the future of Gulf Shores. The public discussion is Tuesday evening at 6 at the Erie H. Meyer Civic Center. Mobile Mayor Sandy Simpson has delivered his first State of the City address. The mayor shared his administration's vision for the city to be the safest and most business and family friendly city in America by 2020. He says to achieve true greatness, the city must use its strength to grow while improving efficiency in city offices and engaging citizens. Mayor Simpson also issued a challenge to businesses and citizens to join together and invest wholeheartedly in Mobile. If you want to read his entire address, we will post for you on our website, fox10tv.com. Mayor Stimson is hosting another community meeting on Monday. It will be held at the Mason Memorial Church of God on Government Street. The meeting gets underway at 6 o'clock. Coming up in your only local news at 7 a.m. this morning, we're continuing to follow a developing story in Pensacola this morning. An explosion at the county jail has left two people dead and dozens hospitalized. A live report is next. And flooding has caused some widespread damage along the Gulf Coast. We'll take a look at what officials are doing to help in the recovery efforts. Now these stories plus more of your local headlines and weather with meteorologist Michael White is all coming up in just two minutes. Our time check 6:57 on your Thursday morning. More news just two minutes. We'll be right back.